Hey everyone, Super Troop here, and today I will be going over the Frost Mage Orb build for patch 8.3. In this video, I will be covering the talents, the Azerite traits you want to focus on, the spell priorities, and the openers I'm currently using, uh, my current AoE and single target essence choices, as well as a couple specifics on corruption and mage gameplay. And a quick note regarding stat weights, uh, Frost Mages, most of their damage centers around the shatter mechanic and the target crit for that or the crit cap would be 33.33 percent crit um, right now it doesn't seem to be entirely achievable unless you get lucky on crit source corruption but later in the patch i'm sure it will be but uh, my best advice regarding stat weights is to just sim yourself and see which stats you should be focusing on so let's get into it first thing I want to go over is the talents for this build. Lonely Winter, Chain Reaction, and Splitting Ice are all used to buff Ice Lance damage. Rune of Power is the preferred talent choice over Encanter's Flow, but I'm currently using Encanter's Flow for reasons I'll expand on later. Regarding Splitting Ice versus Freezing Rain, I've been using Splitting Ice for the Ice Lance damage buff, but I can see Freezing Rain being viable for consistently larger pull sizes. Next I want to talk about Azerite traits. The foundation of this build is Packed Ice. The way that this trait works is it causes each damage tick from Frozen Orb to apply a 4 second debuff that increases the base damage of Ice Lance against that target. Coupled with the triple Ice Lance damage against Frozen targets, this leads to hard hitting Ice Lances when stacking this trait. Three of them is recommended for this build. The trait wideout provides a small increase to Ice Lance's base damage at all times, as well as causes every Ice Lance to reduce the cooldown of Frozen Orb by half a second. You should have at least one of these. Flash Freeze is a trait that increases the damage of your icicles, but more importantly for this build, it causes the damage from each icicle to have a 5% chance to proc Fingers of Frost, which will help maintain the uptime on high stacks of the Chain Reaction talent. Uh, also, the Engineering Helm is a good option to target because it's not relying on RNG to obtain and has packed ice and overwhelming power, so I wanted to show the preferred engineering trait for this helm as well. I also wanted to highlight another trait that has a cool interaction with the Essence Vision of Perfection. Frigid Grass provides an intellect buff and a Fingers of Frost proc when you activate Icy Veins. The way this works with Vision Major procs is that if you currently have the Icy Veins and Frigid Grass intellect buff active, it will extend the duration of both buffs. If it procs while only Icy Veins is active, it will not give you more of the intellect buff or a Fingers of Frost proc. If Vision procs when you do not have the Icy Veins buff active, it will proc Icy Veins, the Intellect buff, and a Fingers of Frost charge. But as soon as Icy Veins runs out, you will lose the Intellect buff regardless of the duration remaining, but this works well with Thermal Void to maintain the proc for longer. I also think the Vision Miner would be a competitive option with this trait primarily for Mythic Plus, but I haven't had much opportunity to test this. Alright, moving on to spell priorities and openers. This is a screenshot of the spell priority list on the Mage Class Forum Altered Time. Basically what it says is that during Orb you want to prioritize Blizzard over Frostbolt on single target and Blizzard over Flurry Ice Lance on two or more targets during Orb. Also important to note that while Packed Ice is up on your target, you do not cast Frostbolt into Flurry procs. Outside of Orb, you will be casting Frostbolt into your Flurry procs to shatter those Frostbolts, and you'll be using Blizzard as a filler over Frostbolt when you do not have any procs to use. Uh, on this same forum post, you can find this link to the custom APL that you can copy paste into your Raidbot sims to properly sim the orb build. So for single target, I like using Condensed Life Force Major since it syncs up well with Icy Veins every 3 minutes and provides 10% haste and a 3% single target damage buff for 30 seconds. Although you should precast Frostbolt before a pull to try to generate procs, one important aspect of using this essence is that if you don't precast Frostbolt before activating Condensed Life Force, your Guardian will essentially stand around until you deal damage to your target and since the haste buff has a short ramp and stacks up to 5, it is important to get this started right on pull. So for this opener with Rune of Power, I precast Frostbolt, and then I use Condensed Life Force followed by Icy Veins, and I'm using Blizzard on single target, followed by Orb, Rune of Power, 
and then I go into using up the procs and I'm using Frostbolt as a filler only because Blizzard was not up at the time because based on the altered time priority list you do want to prioritize Blizzard on single target to cool down orb as fast as possible. This next opener will demonstrate the priorities that I've been following using Encanter's Flow over Rune of Power. So I'm still pre-casting Frostbolt into Condensed Life Force and Icy Veins, but I'm finding that uh, not using Blizzard on single target is leading to a DPS increase. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I think it's primarily that I don't have enough packed dice traits. And I'm also finding that using Frostbolt over Blizzard on single target is maintaining the Chain Reaction Ice Lance buff talent um, a lot more consistently. And one last note on Rune of Power versus Encanter's Flow. I do think that Rune of Power will pull ahead with three packed ice traits, um, but for now Encanter's Flow has been outperforming. And one thing I'm finding with Encanter's Flow is that it, you have a lot higher mobility which allows you to carry a little higher corruption with less of a DPS loss as a result. This next section is going to go over AoE. I'm finding that uh, the essence of the Focus and Iris Major makes a good filler outside of Orb after you've cast Blizzard, and with the haste you get from Icy Veins, the cast time can be relatively quick. I also believe that Blood of the Enemy Rank 3 or Vision of Perfection Major with a Bridget Grasp trait would also be workable options, but I've been sticking with Essence of the Focus and Iris so far with some pretty good results. So for my AoE opener, I still precast Frostbolt, then use Icy Veins, and I like to try and get Essence of the Focus and Iris on cooldown right away, and then I precast Blizzard before I send the orb out. And in this clip, I am using Rune of Power. Um, in Keys, I'm currently using Encanter's Flow, but the only real difference between that is whether or not you cast Rune of Power after Orb. Um, and then, yeah, on multiple targets, you do want to prioritize Blizzard quite high. Um, you want to try not to cap on Ice Lance procs or Waste Flurry procs, but it is important to keep Blizzard up as much as possible to try and get another frozen orb out as soon as you can. In the last section of this guide, I'll go over a couple points on corruption and highlight a few mage specific things. One corruption that I want to focus on is Ineffable Truth, which comes with the one that drops off Ilganon. The way that this corruption works is in order to speed up the rate of your cooldowns, it actually reduces their base cooldown times by one third with the rank two corruption. This means that when procced, you can overlap Blizzard casts in addition to Blizzard having a larger contribution to Frozen Orb's cooldown. So in this clip, I wanted to show how effective the double charge of Prosnova talent is for managing things from beyond when they spawn, as well as the fact that you can use Blizzard on a thing from beyond if it spawns close enough to your target uh, to help cool down your orb faster. And then in this clip, uh, I just wanted to show that you don't actually have to be facing your target location for where you cast Blizzard or um, your target that you want to counterspell. So a focus macro for counterspell works very effectively. And then in this clip, um, I just wanted to demonstrate exactly how the Fingers of Frost proc duration works. Um, you can essentially hold one Fingers of Frost proc up until one second left if Orb is coming up off cooldown. And when the Orb hits the target, it'll generate a second and refresh the duration on both of the Fingers of Frost charges. And then this last clip is just an example of what a Shimmer Ice Lance looks like. Uh, with enough haste, uh, most likely just under Icy Veins and or Lust, uh, you're able to squeeze two Ice Lances into one Flurry proc. If you blink from far enough away, it is more of an advanced concept, but it is something that is achievable with the right amount of haste, so I just wanted to include that. All right, that's going to be it for this guide. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it, and hopefully you learned something that can help improve your gameplay. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as soon as I'm able. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button or subscribe, and please check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv supertroop, and follow so you can get notifications when I go live. Thank you again, good luck, and have fun.